Good day, beloved in Christ. Welcome to prayer for Friday, April the 16th. Today we commemorate Molly Brandt. Reading from For All the Saints, Molly Brandt was an 18th century Mohawk woman known among her own people as Kanwatsi Jayeni, who sustained them with her example of loyalty to the British crown and the Anglican church when they were forced to make a new homeland in Canada. She was born into a family of chieftains and attended an Anglican mission school where she learned to speak English as fluently as her native tongue. In 1759, she became the companion of Sir William Johnson, the British agent for Indian affairs, and soon afterwards they were married according to Mohawk rites. Though the Union was not recognized by English law, the white community admired her dignity and wisdom in the ways of two cultures and continued to treat her with immense respect even after Sir William's death in 1774. Mohawk matrons have an influential voice in the councils of their nation, and Molly Brandt played a decisive role in convincing her people to remain loyal to the British crown during the American Revolution. But she and her family paid a terrible price for their loyalty because the rebels destroyed her home and forced her to take her clan into exile. She eventually settled at Kingston, where the British government built her a new house and gave her a generous pension. She became a founding member of St. George's Anglican Parish and died at Kingston on this date in 1796, sincerely mourned by United Empire loyalists as well as her own people. Let us pray. Lord our God, you endued your servant Molly Brandt with the gifts of justice and loyalty and made her a wise and prudent mother in the household of the Mohawk nation. May we ever give you thanks, O Lord, our Maker, and nurture one another in the knowledge of your power through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So good to recognize both women and indigenous peoples in the life of our nation Canada and in our church. Let us take a deep breath as we begin to sing our opening sentences together. Lord, open our lips together, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us together. O Lord, make haste to help us together. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. O come, let us worship. The Jubilate. Jubilate Deo. Jubilate Deo. Alleluia, Alleluia. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and His faithfulness endures from age to age. And so we sing together. Jubilate Deo, Jubilate Deo, Alleluia, Alleluia. Psalm 16 is a lovely prayer for protection and a declaration of faith remarkable in the Older Testament in verse 10, For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. This may be a reference to the Messiah, 
the Messiah's protection from the power of death. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, You are my help, my good above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart therefore is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. Let us pray. Gracious God, we bless your holy name for the heritage you have given us. Show us the path of life, that we may follow it in hope, and come to know the joy of the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Chapter 3 of First John, verses 1 to 10, describe the children of God. See how much the Father has loved us. His love is so great that we are called God's children, and so, in fact, we are. This is why the world does not know us. It has not known God. My dear friends, we are now God's children, but it is not yet clear what we shall become. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. Everyone who has this hope in Christ keeps themselves pure, just as Christ is pure. Whoever sins is guilty of breaking God's law because sin is a breaking of the law. You know that Christ appeared in order to take away sins and that there is no sin in him. So everyone who lives in union with Christ does not continue to sin, but whoever continues to sin has never seen him or known him. Let no one deceive you, my children. Whoever does what is right is righteous, just as Christ is righteous. Whoever continues to sin belongs to the devil, because the devil has sinned from the very beginning. The Son of God appeared for this very reason, to destroy what the devil had done. Whoever is a child of God does not continue to sin, for God's very nature is in them, and because God is their Father, one cannot continue thus to sin. Here is the clear difference between God's children and the devil's children. Anyone who does not do what is right or does not love their brother and sister is not God's child. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A feature of our reading today is clear darkness and light bipolarity. This is not due to ignorance or immaturity, but it is an ancient teaching method. To clarify things, make them simple. It's either God or the devil. We do this with children today. We teach children, don't talk to strangers. Well, there's only two types of people in the world, people you know, family, and everybody else. And we do that to help children be clear about who they can trust. As they grow, they develop a sense of discernment to learn who they can trust and who they cannot trust, who they don't feel comfortable around. The rule, don't talk to strangers, is a developmental rule consistent with the age and maturity of the child. Similarly, John is teaching the young Christian community there are the children of the light, children of God, and children of the devil. Don't have fellowship with the devil. Don't sin. Do the right thing. By this we know that you are children of God. 
It's simple teaching to help us clarify our walk with the light. As we grow older and more sophisticated, we recognize that so much of our life it really is in the gray zone. We are well educated. We understand mitigating factors. We understand complexities of moral decision making, the complexity of being a Christian in the world, but not of the world. A challenge of living in the gray zone is the continuing development of the sense of discernment. A challenge of life in the gray zone is that our eyes become accustomed to the darkness, more comfortable with the darkness than it is with the brightness of the divine presence. So let us grow in maturity. Let us continue to make complex decisions, understanding through the gift of discernment, how best to go forward, but let us be on the light end of the gray scale, that our eyes are never maladjusted to the brightness of the divine radiance. May the Lord help us to live in the light as children of God's illumination. Lord, help us. Lord, graciously help us. Our prayer this morning is called a bidding prayer, where you are bidden, where you are asked to pray for something. So our first petition is, let us ask the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace. There will be a time of silence after that bidding, and in that time, it is good to ask the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace, and we come together again with the response, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to help us to love others as God has loved us. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for peace and justice in the world, I especially pray for Myanmar and Hong Kong, for deliverance for the people of St. Vincent and the surrounding islands. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen and relieve those who are in need. you'd like to pause the recording to make intercession for those on your hearts, I encourage you to do so. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to renew the church through the power of the life-giving Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit, with the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a blessed day today. TGIF.